Oh, what a sweet song. I got to say, that one just kind of jumped out to a lot of us at WNCW when we first listened to this uh, wonderful, eclectic release, Childhood Battles, from Dave Desmelik and his Army of Love. And, yep, that's a tune with Alexa Rose. And, uh, yeah, thoughts on when you were first given that song? Was it like you got to choose, or was, Dave, were you like, Alexa's got the range and the, the particular kind of feel for this particular yeah, song? Yeah, I kind of I felt um, like I, I knew who... I was going to ask to sing what song, okay. generally speaking. And there might have been a couple of, before I contacted everyone, a couple of switches here and there. But um, I, I pretty much knew who I was going to ask to sing which song. Mm-hmm. It just felt felt like the right the right process. Mm-hmm. So. so you presented it to Alexa and Alexa? Yeah, I mean, and I, I loved the song immediately. And I thought it was just such a an upbeat, kind of cheerful, hopeful song. And I didn't get to hear the other songs until... Um, Dave gave me a copy of the album and and really I think what struck me the most is we all know Dave and we love Dave and we know his songwriting but to hear all these local artists who we also kind of know each other's music to hear you know you really hear Dave come through all these songs and then you really kind of start to really feel how much this could happen to anybody mm-hmm. and it really brings us together in that way so I'm honored to be able to sing that song. That's great. That's great. And, and the song, it's a. Uh, I, I like how you you mentioned Dave uh, that it was written at first with doctors and nurses in mind, but really it's about any and all of us that could be healers. I hear that in that song, and I also hear it, it could be you could be singing to to Holmes or the patient himself. Like, no, you, the kid dealing with it, you're the healer too. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And that's. You're so right, Martin. Um, Courage up to the ceiling, right? That first line, yeah, I love that line. Yeah, and and we were told early on in Holmes' diagnosis, as I'm sure a lot of families um, who go through various pediatric illnesses with their children uh, find out, we were, to- we were told early on, you will be amazed at how resilient kids are. They handle this stuff way better than adults do. And through the process, we have seen that that is pretty much true. Um, you know, kids, they don't think about the future so much or the past there. They are in the present, in the, in the here and now. And so it's, it's amazing how they, they do. And I can just speak kind of from watching Holmes go through, through his process with this is it is, it is amazing how resilient they really are and how strong they be in the face. They are in the face of adversity and, and these huge, crazy things that are put on them, thrown on them, that they don't even know anything about, you know? They, but what they can comprehend is, okay, I can get through this today, and then I'll deal with tomorrow when tomorrow comes. Whereas adults, I think, tend to project and look farther down the road, which it's what we do. <laughs> Serves but, a purpose. But, but you're, you're, I, I, I like your assessment of, of how the healer can often be the, the patient. Mm-hmm. So, so you and your wife and, and the whole family have been involved with just yeah all these countless visits to hospitals and staying there over the night for, for a week at a time and then working with the bills and the, the paperwork, I can only imagine. Uh, and now you're putting together this concert and this CD. So um, if I can ask your perspective, Dave, on what is like been one of like the biggest kind of challenges that could be fixed. I mean, there's all the emotional, obviously the emotions must be like the toughest challenge, but in terms of like the mechanics of it, I guess I'm, I'm being an adult and I'm projecting, looking forward or look, look, looking ahead. That is what has been something that I guess really needs the most work or most needs to be fixed. Um, I, I, that's a, a great question. I, I believe that as a society, I think we can do better with my opinion with things like like putting pediatric illnesses a little more in the forefront um, of our thinking in society. So I, I understand and, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that would disagree with me and I understand and I am not one who often or very often at all talks politically However, you're asking the question, so to me, one thing that would be immediate is if we would think as a society more about um, funding and research for pediatric illness, not just brain cancer, but, you know, juvenile diabetes, all kinds of stuff, 
um, rather than building another stealth bomber or do we really need 14 more tanks? I don't know. Again, a lot of people would probably disagree with me, but in my, my perspective now is that we need more funding and, um, and we need it now and we need more research. You know, Holmes is, when he, the, the chemo regimen that Holmes got, the chemo treatment is the same he would have gotten 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. And something about that just doesn't sit well with me, you know. And it's such a small percentage of taxpayer funded government money goes to pediatric um, cancer research. And that's all kinds of pediatric cancer, not just brain tumors. Um, and so only 4%. Wow. wow. It's four cents for every dollar goes to pediatric cancer research. That's quite surprising. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, with all the different aspects you've been working with, the time spent with doctors and nurses, the actual uh, medical procedures and advancements or lack thereof, it sounds like, um, dealing with insurance, hmm. dealing, dealing with, with bills and all that, dealing with homes being out of school. I mean, is there one that's just like really falls farthest behind has been the toughest challenge? Uh, Like if you were to tell someone who's new to this because they just got a diagnosis of their kid, is there one particular uh, pothole in the road that you would warn them about to watch out for and be prepared for? Um, I don't know that I would call it a pothole or something to to watch out for, but certainly um, what Claire and I learned early in, in this, and I wish Claire was here. She is not. She was going to come, but Holmes is actually sick at home right now with a stomach bug. Um, but I would say you have to advocate for your kid. You, you have to, because lots of medical professionals have different opinions. A neurosurgeon might say one thing and an oncologist might say something else and, and they might not agree, but they both think that they're right. And, and it's okay to get second opinions and it's okay to get third opinions and it's okay to ask lots of questions and, and it's okay to, to be real with your family when you're going through this, you know. I mean, I know we have never hid anything from Holmes. And if he has questions, we answer them as best we can. And, um, but you really, you got you to gotta advocate for your child and, and your family. And if there's something that you don't understand, do not be scared to speak up and ask. Because you have every right to, to get answers. Well, I can tell you, you've learned a lot from this process, <laughs> as one might imagine. Uh, Dave Desmelik here on WNCW. You've written a bunch of great songs. You need to write a book next, you and Claire. Maybe a how-to to how to <laughs> deal with She would be much this. better at that than okay. me. Okay, all right. Well, maybe she's listening right now. Um, uh, cool. Well, thanks for that. I appreciate that insight. And let's wrap it up maybe with one more because uh, we've got another song here, and uh, Laura Blackley is in the house. Hey, you, hey y'all. <laughs> talk about busy, like like the Steve Cannon Rangers and all. I mean, you've been with the, the NC Songsmiths. You've been working with them lately, right? Yeah, yeah. It's been a good busy. A good busy, yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, with a lot, yeah. a lot of different uh, projects and stuff. You're taking part in the Christmas Jam by Day events? Yeah, that's coming up. Um, oh, yeah, that's the other thing that's not going on this weekend. Right? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. right. That'll all be wrapped up by Sunday, y'all, you know. That's true, yes. Um, but, yeah, Friday and Saturday is, yes, the Warren Haynes Christmas Jam, and the Jam by Day events are a lot of mostly regional musicians playing at various clubs around Asheville, and you are Friday? Friday at one thirty at Jack of the Wood. Jack of the Wood. And I'll be in the round with Todd Cecil and Stevie Lee Coombs. All right, cool. And for now, you got another Desmelic penned tune. So uh, we're going to do um, Ring That Bell is the song that Laura sang. It's, it's bluesy, and I knew as we were talking earlier that Laura was the right one to sing this. And just to, um, as a lead into this song, um, the r- Ring That Bell, so the bell is um, oftentimes at cancer clinics and radiation centers across the country, when you finish your, your chemo um, protocol or you're finished with radiation, finally, you get to ring a bell. And it's a big deal. And so on the album, um, there is at the beginning of this song, there is a bell ringing and a bunch of people hooting and hollering. And at the end of the song as well, that is actual footage. That is Holmes ringing the bell. Nice. Um, and all of us cheering. And, and anyway, it's a big deal. So, so I wrote this song called Ring That Bell. <laughs> 